My name is Rob Reiter. I'm a professor of urology at the School of Medicine of UCLA and at the UCLA Health System, and I'm the director of our prostate cancer program. Today I'd like to share with you some really exciting new information about a new test that we're offering at UCLA for the diagnosis and management of men with prostate cancer. Uh, it's called PSMA or gallium PSMA PET scanning or PET CT scanning and it's a way of imaging prostate cancer that really until the present day was simply not possible. You can ask questions on Twitter using the hashtag shown uh, in front of you. So prostate cancer, what is it? Most people have heard about prostate cancer. It's the most common malignancy that's diagnosed in American men each year. There are about 220,000 men diagnosed each year in the United States and more than 300,000 in Europe. There are about 30,000 men who die unfortunately from this disease. Yet there are many controversies about this disease, particularly about the use of PSA screening to detect and diagnose prostate cancer. And that's because it's a very variable disease. About 30 to 50 percent of men with newly diagnosed prostate cancer have very slow growing or indolent disease that actually may not require management at all. And so those men who are managed, that can lead to overtreatment. And that's one of the controversies that exists. But on the other hand, about 50 to as many as 70 percent of men with newly diagnosed prostate cancer have disease that can be potentially life-threatening, and about 20 percent of all men diagnosed have very aggressive disease that is almost always life-threatening if not managed uh, very aggressively. Uh, and among men who are treated, as many as 30 percent can develop a recurrence afterwards. So there are many uh, unmet needs in the field of prostate cancer, particularly what's the best form of treatment for men who have very high risk disease, and also what's the best way to manage men who have a recurrence of their disease after their primary treatment. And so one of the ways that we physicians, of course, manage uh, patients with any type of cancer is through imaging. That is, we want to visualize or see where the cancer is, to uh, what extent it's gone, has it metastasized or spread to other parts of the body. And so there are, there are uses of imaging at almost all stages in the management of prostate cancer, which I show briefly in the schematic right here. So initially a patient comes in, uh, is evaluated for an elevation in their PSA. Uh, they may get a biopsy and, and may be imaged. Uh, and then are diagnosed with what we would call primary or clinically localized disease. That is disease that we thought is still, we think is still contained in the prostate and could be treated successfully with surgery or radiation. Some men who come in with what uh, is thought to be early stage or localized disease, however, in fact could have metastatic disease at the time of diagnosis. And at least until recently, we had no way really to detect the presence of metastatic disease at the very earliest stages of prostate cancer. After men get treated with either surgery or radiation, as I mentioned, about 30 percent may actually develop a recurrence of their disease. That could be residual disease that was not removed or irradiated, or it could be newly, uh, newly recurrent disease that could be localized in the pelvis or could be metastatic to other areas. And then as the disease progresses, uh, it, it can ultimately uh, lead to uh, the death of patients. And so there are uh, needs for imaging at almost every single stage in the disease to evaluate the location of the disease and to know what the best way to manage it is. Now there are many ways that we can image prostate cancer. In the case of early disease, that is cancer that as I said is localized to the prostate, there's been a revolution in our ability to see these cancers using MRI, what's called multi-parametric MRI scanning of the prostate. We at UCLA have been leaders in this field for more than 13 years, uh, but I'm not going to talk about that today. Uh, and there's, uh, but if you have questions about that, certainly you can uh, ask them uh, following the presentation. However, and then we can also use ultrasound and CAT scanning to detect early disease, but these really are not particularly, uh, particularly good for this purpose. In the case of metastatic disease, until recently, the only ways we could image it were with what are called bone scans, which can actually detect disease in the bone, uh, but they're not very sensitive. That is, they will miss very small amounts of disease, and they can be, uh, they can be what we call false positives. That is, 
that we can see a signal, but it may not actually be from prostate cancer. It could be from arthritis, uh, injuries to the bone that could have occurred years earlier. So bone scans are used, but quite limited. More recently, we've used a newer form of bone scan, which is called sodium fluoride PET-CT. It's a type of PET imaging, which is more sensitive, but again, can detect non-cancerous causes of abnormalities in the bone. In a few centers in the U.S., there are other types of PET scans that are available. At UCLA, we've used what are called C11 acetate PET scans, and at places like the Mayo Clinic and a few other places, they use what are called C11 choline scans. These, again, are sensitive ways to detect cancer that could be in the bone, but also in the soft tissues, such as the lung, the liver, or the lymph nodes, which prostate cancer commonly goes to. However, these, uh, these exams are really only available in a few limited sites in the U.S., and they, again, are not particularly sensitive for detection of prostate cancer, and there can be what are called false positives because these scans can be abnormal in areas that actually don't harbor prostate cancer. So they've had limited utility, although uh, at least until today, this has been the best we've had available. There are also some advanced forms of MRI that can be used as well, but are used in the United States as well, uh, in particular in a fairly limited manner. Now to detect metastatic disease involving soft tissues and bone, in addition to C11 acetate and choline, what's really new and is starting to revolutionize the field is a test called Gallium PSMA PET-CT, which I'm going to talk to you about today. It's, uh, it was actually started in Germany uh, and is fairly widely available in Germany today. It's also available in Australia, but at least until recently was not available at all in the United States. So what are some of the common questions that we try to address using, or so what are some of the unmet needs that we have for men who have prostate cancer and for whom this newer form of imaging uh, could be utilized. So one question is in a patient who has what, what we would call high-risk disease. Uh, we stage prostate cancer based on the extent of the disease in the prostate and also on what we call the Gleason score, which is a measure of the aggressiveness of prostate cancer. And it generally is, a, is, a scale, uh, is graded on a scale of 6 to 10, with 8, 9, and 10 being very aggressive disease and seven being what we would call intermediate risk or less aggressive prostate cancer, and six being very slow-growing prostate cancer. As I said, about 20% of men who come to us nowadays have what we would call high-risk prostate cancer. And high-risk means that, that the disease is possible, possibly not localized to the prostate and could indeed be metastatic to lymph nodes or bone. But at least until recently, we had no way to detect uh, that unless it was at a very, very advanced uh, stage, in which case traditional scans like CAT scan or bone scan could be used. So the question that commonly arises in men with early stage but high risk prostate cancer is, where is the disease? Is it confined to the prostate gland or is it already spread to lymph nodes, bone, or elsewhere? And this is important because what treatment we adopt is predicated on the extent of disease. Surgery and radiation alone can be curative if the disease is localized to the prostate, but if the disease is elsewhere, obviously taking care of the prostate, in, prostate cancer in the prostate won't be sufficient. And the questions are, should we use what's called hormone therapy, which is uh, a form of castration therapy? Should we use chemotherapy? Should we use a combination of all of these approaches? And the problem un until recently, as I've said, is that standard imaging with bone scan, MRI, and CT scan really is insensitive. That is, it can only detect a minority of the cases where the prostate cancer has spread to lymph nodes or elsewhere. Sodium fluoride PET-CT is more sensitive, but at the, the trade-off is that there are more false positives because of old injuries, arthritis, degeneration of bone as we age. C11 acetate and choline have very limited availability can be used, but are also relatively insensitive. Another situation which we commonly find, as I mentioned, is patients who have recurrent disease. They've had treatment with radiation or surgery, but their PSA blood test is rising, indicating that there's still disease or that disease has started up again. And then the question is, where is the disease? If the disease is located in the pelvis, we might treat it with radiation. 
But if it's gone to bone or somewhere else, then obviously radiation would not be enough therapy. Is it in one place or is it in many places? If it's in one place, sometimes we can kind of spot weld and treat that single site with radiation or even with surgical removal. So again, the problem is that been standard of care imaging, as I mentioned, is very insensitive, particularly at very low PSA levels when we commonly diagnose recurrent prostate cancer. And so consequently, most decisions we made until now were blind. We basically take a guess about where the disease is and we decide to use radiation or hormone therapy, but really not knowing whether it's the appropriate treatment. This can work, but obviously it would be much better if we knew where the disease was located. So what is gallium PSMA PET scanning? So the first thing to understand is what is PSMA? So PSMA is basically a protein and it's present on the surface of prostate cancer cells. And what's important is that this protein is present almost exclusively on prostate and prostate cancer cells and not in other normal tissues in the body. So that if you detect the presence of this protein, it's almost certainly telling you, ah, this is prostate or prostate cancer. Uh, and it is very, therefore, cancer specific, unlike traditional bone scans, CAT scans, MRIs, and even choline and acetate scans that I mentioned earlier. So this is an enzyme, and so there are what are called antibodies, and then there are drugs that can bind to this protein. And if you tag that protein, if you tag the protein with a radio label, then you can detect it with a PET scan, which is something that detects positrons emitted uh, from radionuclides. So that's the basic concept. And so the rationale is that we can use this prostate cancer specific target as a way to uh, identify the location of prostate cancer using either antibodies or small molecules that bind to this protein and that are labeled with a radio label that can then be detected by the PET scan. And so P uh, gallium PSMA is a small molecule, a peptide, that was uh, synthesized in Germany in Heidelberg. Uh, this is the chemical structure right here. And it can be radio labeled with what's called gallium, which is a positron emitting radionuclide, which can be detected by conventional PET scans. And if you look on the left here, there's just two typical images. The above one is with C11 choline. You can see where the arrow is, a very faint signal uh, of prostate cancer coming from a lymph node near the prostate. But the gallium PSMA scan below, you can see, is much stronger, much more intense, much more obvious. So there have been now many studies done in Europe and Australia basically evaluating the use, the, uh, the use of PSMA PET scans for detection of prostate cancer both in the, in the two settings that I mentioned, recurrence after treatment and also newly diagnosed high-risk patients. So I'll go through some of the data right now, if you'll bear with me. So there have been a number of papers looking at what's called the sensitivity, that is the ability uh, to detect prostate cancer in lymph nodes or bone in men who have uh, lymph node or bone metastases. And they've looked at the sensitivity of this test uh, co and correlated it with the PSA blood test result. And what you can see here is that even at very low PSAs, 0.2 to 0.5, those are very, very low PSAs, this scan can detect the presence of cancer in as many as 60% of men. With conventional imaging, that might be 20 or 10% or even less sometimes. And as the PSA gets higher, you can see that the ability to detect the presence of cancer goes up dramatically. With PSAs uh, between one and two, which are still very, very low, uh, being able to visualize as many as 90 to 95 percent of these cancers, which again really was not possible until the advent of the scan. That's from one paper. Here's another paper showing something similar with choline, and you can see that choline is less sensitive, 36 percent versus 60 percent, 43 versus 72, et cetera, et cetera. So in a direct comparison of PSMA, the newer form of scan, with acetate and choline, the older form of scan, which again is only available in a few centers in the United States, uh, PSMA wins out uh, in almost every comparison that's been done heretofore. And some, here's some, uh, some cases that I'll go through as we move along. 
Uh, this is a patient who had what we would call high-risk prostate cancer, uh, Gleason 9 on a scale of 10. Uh, it was uh, very invasive, and after surgery, his PSA was actually zero. But then his PSA started to rise again, and they wanted to detect where's the cancer. And as you can see here in his spine, this is uh, the spine, uh, you can see a very strong signal coming from a lesion in the spine, showing the ability of PSMA scans to detect the presence of cancer in bone. Uh, here's another case here. This was a 75-year-old man who had surgery and then even had radiation for a recurrence, but then as PSA started to rise again, reached a value of 1, and all the traditional imaging that was done was negative, but this PSMA scan could show the presence of this lymph node shown by the arrow there. Very strong signal. So this is the PET scan, the second image, and then what, what happens here is that we overlay the PET scan onto a CAT scan so we can localize exa exactly where this lesion is located. And you can see it's present in this single lymph node as the only site of spread. And so this might be treatable with further radiation just to that single site or with uh, surgery to remove that lymph node. So this is another a very good example that we see. Uh, here's uh, another study again where they compared choline to PSMA similar to the one I showed two slides ago, showing that for each PSA level, the sensitivity, the ability to, de to detect disease, which is much higher in the group of men who had PSMA scanning versus those who had, uh, in this case, what's called FAT in a different positron emitter, uh, choline. Uh, and on the top, you see some comparative images in the same patients. On the left, you see a choline scan in a man with recurrent prostate cancer. On the right, you see the PSMA scan. You can see the image is much, much stronger, even in this very, very small lymph node in this patient. And the same thing on this side, where the choline was almost not visualized whatsoever, but the PSMA scan was strongly positive. And importantly, it's very specific. There's almost no background seen, so you get a very clear signal. And this is certainly prostate cancer. If I saw this scan, I might say, mm, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, uh, because I know that choline is not 100% correlated with the presence of prostate cancer. And then finally, in the setting of recurrent disease, there was a large, what we call a meta-analysis, that is, an analysis of all the analyses uh, that was presented uh, in a paper recently from a group in Australia, where they looked at all of the published articles on PSMA scanning and basically could show that as PSAs increase, the sensitivity of the test increases as well. But importantly, you can see positive images in PSAs as low as 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and you don't have to wait till the PSAs get to be much higher, which is traditionally what we would have had to do. So this really makes it now able for us to detect the location of disease at very early stages of a recurrence. Now the other, and then here's two cases from UCLA that we've done just over the last few months. These are patients of mine. One is a 60-year-old man who had a radical prostatectomy. He had surgery to remove his prostate. His PSA was rising. We, it was 0.9. We didn't know where the disease was. And as you can see here, he has a single lymph node that's positive located right there. And on the right, another patient, 77 years old, had a radical prostatectomy years ago. PSA was rising. And again, we could single, see a single site of disease in a lymph node located on the right side here. And so we could then go ahead and treat these single sites uh, with radiation, uh, or in some cases could even go back and do surgery. Uh, I'm not sure what we did. I can't remember what we did for these two cases. Now, as I said, the other use of PSMA imaging that's really a high unmet need is in men who come to us with very high risk prostate cancer, which accounts for about 20% of all the men that we see. There have been fewer studies of PSMA scans in this setting, but there are a number that have been done, and this is one showing that uh, the, use, the use of, uh, of PSMA PET scanning for detecting uh, the presence of metastatic disease in people who have early stage disease. And again, you can see here's the sensitivity here, 65%. So that means 65% of all of the men who had prostate cancer and lymph nodes, PSMA scans, were able to detect it. Uh, and this really changes the game potentially for men with high-risk disease in terms of our ability to detect the extent of disease at the time of diagnosis. And importantly, what's called the specificity, 
which is the accuracy of the test was very high. That is, if the scan was positive, 99% of those men had prostate cancer. Uh, and I think that's very important as well because the last thing we want to do is make a decision based on what turns out to be a false uh, positive or false PET scan. So this is very accurate compared to any other modality that we have, bone scan, choline acetate, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and here's a couple of cases from, from that study. A man with very high-risk prostate cancer was found to have a lymph node uh, uh, on this side located next to the bladder, and in this case was found to have a lymph node that was actually to the right of his rectum, which is located right here. These lymph nodes were very small and would not have been detected by any other means, and so they could either be targeted uh, with surgery or radiation, or perhaps uh, given systemic or hormone treatment in just, instead of just surgery or radiation alone. Uh, and then this is uh, another case of primary prostate cancer uh, where a man was uh, injected and found to have a small amount of disease in the pelvis that would not have been detected otherwise. Uh, so there's been a couple of studies showing the impact of PSMA scanning on management. This was a, a couple of publications related to how PET scans using PSMA probes can alter the management of men undergoing radiation. And I think the salient uh, key feature here is how often does a PSMA scan change what the, do what the doctor does, where the doctor gives radiation to, whether or not to give radiation, uh, and things of that sort. In the various studies, it's changed the management in as many as 50% of men in one study, 30% in another, uh, and 30% in a third. So the importance of using new imaging techniques is that we can actually change what we otherwise would have done previously. So uh, when I talk to patients about the need for this scan, I really talk to them about how this can actually impact the management decision that I'm going to make with him about the management of his cancer. Now finally, this is not just a diagnostic test, but in the very near future, we'll be able to use this to treat men with prostate cancer as well. In Germany, there's a couple of sites where they've used this same probe, this same small molecule that binds to PSMA to target prostate cancer cells with therapeutic doses of radiation using uh, the radio, uh, radio uh, label uh, lutetium-177, which kills cells. It's not just for detection of cancer cells. And this is a study in men who had very advanced forms of prostate cancer, had failed treatment with all conventional forms of treatment, had nothing left that could be offered, and they underwent this treatment. And 45% of men had a significant decline uh, uh, in their PSA levels after uh, this treatment. And here's uh, a picture of one patient who had disease throughout his bones. That's a PSMA scan, and you can see all of the black there in the spine and in the pelvis is prostate cancer. Was treated with multiple cycles of lutetium PSMA and had complete resolution of their disease everywhere. And this is not an uncommon experience, uh, although the reports of this treatment are still early and it's investigational. So, what are we doing at UCLA? So a few months ago, since September, we opened up a study uh, with approval from UCLA as well as the FDA to use PSMA imaging for men who have recurrence of their prostate cancer. That is a rising PSA after primary treatment or even more advanced disease. We're going to enroll as many as 1,500 men on this study. It's a study, but basically, we're using this in our practice, daily practice, and we're tracking the results of all of the men so that we can then report them later to the FDA to try and get approval for this imaging test. Very soon, we'll be starting to do this also in men who have high-risk prostate cancer. Those men with Gleason 8, 9, 10 disease, like I mentioned, who are just coming to us uh, to start their treatment. And then, hopefully, in the second quarter of 2017, we'll begin an actual clinical trial of the lutetium PSMA scan, uh, which I mentioned at the very end. And so this is now available uh, for patients at UCLA. So the conclusions are, are really that, uh, that historical imaging, traditional imaging, was insensitive in terms of detection of the location of prostate cancer outside of the prostate, 
in men with high risk in metastatic pro and, and recurrent prostate cancer. And that PSMA imaging has really, is really a game changer in terms of our ability to manage it. And we're fortunate at UCLA to have this available. We're one of only a very few sites uh, for which this is available in the United States. Uh, and we're offering it to all men who meet the criteria of either high-risk disease or recurrent disease. So with that, I'll conclude and then I'll turn, turn it over to you uh, with any questions that you may have. So the first question is, I had surgery three years ago and my PSA was zero initially, but then started to rise and now it's 0 0.4. Should I get a PSMA scan? So the answer to that is yes, you should get a PSMA scan because we don't know where your disease is located. If it's where the prostate used to be, then radiation would be an appropriate treatment for you. But if indeed the cancer is in lymph nodes or in bone or somewhere else, then radiation may not be sufficient in and of itself, and you would probably benefit from hormone therapy or some other form of therapy. Uh, I should mention that PSMA scans, unfortunately, are not covered by insurance right now, uh, and so there is a fee for uh, obtaining this test at UCLA. Uh, but it would be available to you, and I think that this would be uh, what I would certainly recommend because it could really alter your management. The second question I have is, how would a PSMA scan alter your management decisions in somebody who had a Gleason 9, a high-risk cancer, and the MRI was done and showed the cancer escaped the prostate but there really were nothing, no other findings suggestive of metastasis. The bone scan was negative, the CAT scan was negative. So how would a PSMA scan change your management? Um, it could change your management in a number of ways. If a lymph node was found to be involved with prostate cancer, if it was sim simply a one or two lymph nodes, you might still have radiation to your prostate as well as to your entire pelvis or you might have surgery to remove the prostate cancer and then remove the involved lymph nodes, and that may indeed be curative. On the other hand, if you had many lymph nodes positive, then you would probably need some form of systemic treatment such as hormone therapy. On the other hand, if you had bone metastasis uh, widespread, then you would probably need chemotherapy and hormone therapy. So PSMA scanning in this setting really gives us the opportunity to really tailor the management so that those who need more aggressive treatment uh, can get it and then benefit from it, as opposed to being undertreated, which is one of the current problems that we have. And then the third question I have here is, how would a PSMA scan alter the management of a man who had a PSA of four one year after surgery? So this is similar to the first question. Uh, and again, this is a case of a PS, uh, PSA uh, reflecting a recurrence of the disease uh, a few years after a patient had surgery and could actually reflect either, again, residual disease or recurrent disease in the pelvis near where the prostate used to be, or it could reflect disease that's metastatic to lymph nodes, bone, or elsewhere. So knowing the extent of disease could certainly alter management Again, if the disease is located in one or two places, what we call oligometastatic disease, we might treat that with just spot radiation or surgery to remove those single sites. But if it's more widespread, uh, we would manage it with systemic treatment. Uh, and with a PSA of four, as I showed, the PSMA scan is virtually certain to detect where the disease is located compared to conventional scanning. 